This is a crisis right now. We have to deflate this political attack and we also have to make sure that we stand up to these bullies. The kids are looking at us right now and wondering how we're going to respond when there are adults, adult politicians who are questioning their very humanity. This is a time where we have to be more bold and more vocal than we ever have been. And that's got to start at the top with political leaders not ceding ground to these bullies. Hey, Grio fam, it's Jerry and Keith Gaynor, White House correspondent and managing editor of Politics at the Grio. And I'm here with Kelly Robinson, the president of the Human Rights Campaign, the largest LGBTQ organization in the nation. Kelly, welcome back to the Grio. Pleasure to have you. Hey, thanks for having me. Let's start start with the top of the news. Uh, the human rights campaign just issued a state of emergency warning um, in reaction to the hundreds of anti-LGBTQ legislation that has been proposed. More than 70 have been passed into law. Uh, what message is HRC trying to send to the nation and to the world? Because this is the first time HRC has ever done this. So I imagine that this was not a decision that was uh, done lightly. Absolutely. This is a national warning and call to action. The LGBTQ plus community is facing um, an imminent health and safety threat to us and to our families. Not only do you see hundreds of anti-LGBTQ plus bills introduced across the states with 75 actually signed into law, but you also see that match with violent pro political rhetoric that's leading to real life harm. I mean, I'm talking about bomb threats to pediatricians that care for our children, uh, armed people at drag queen story hours, uh, attacks to the places that we work and that we shop. This is a moment where everyone needs to be aware of both the dizzying patchwork of protections, but also the real life harm that our community is experiencing. And when we're aware, we can take action. And you also uh, issued a guide for LGBTQ people. Uh, tell us more about this guide and the intent, the intent behind that. The laws from state to state are so different right now. I mean, they're dictating what your kids can learn in school. They're dictating what bathrooms you can go to, even bathrooms that don't match your gender identity. We need to make sure that as we're entering a busy season of travel, that people have this information. In addition, folks are making big decisions about things like where to go to school or deciding to take a new job in another state. We wanted to make sure that folks know the law state to state and know their rights and also know where to go if they have an issue, if their rights are being violated. The guidebook encompasses all of that and gives you tools, whether you're living or traveling through a hostile state or advocacy tools, if you live in a positive state, about more that can be done to make sure that your community and your family is protected. And in terms of the state of emergency warning, is this, is this a warning issue that will be issued uh, ongoing until there's some type of shift in what we're seeing right now across the country? Absolutely. We'll continue to provide updates because what we are seeing play out is a threat to the health and safety of our community. We want to make sure that people stay up to date and that we're applying interventions to reduce this harm wherever possible. And what I don't want to lose is that there is something that we can do about this, right? Um, we need employers to take greater action to ensure that the benefits that they're providing support all of their employees and to even be public in fighting back against some of these state laws. We need Need legislators to take action and community members to push them to, to make sure that the laws actually represent the majority of Americans. Because I also need us to remember that, look, this is not where the majority of Americans are. The majority of Americans support the LGBTQ plus community. The majority of Americans want non-discrimination laws on the books. They want our families to be protected. There's actions we have to take to get them there. And speaking of action, you know, I know that you are very active on the ground. I, I Last I last saw you at a, a rally um, outside the Capitol building. Tell us more about the work that HRC is doing on the ground, what the advocacy work looks like, especially uh, interacting with the community on the ground, and how has um, that been for you personally? Absolutely. I'm a grassroots organizer at my heart, so I love the fact that HRC is the largest grassroots movement of people fighting for LGBTQ plus equality and liberation. We've got over 3 million members all across the country that we engage to take action on these issues to change the nature of policy, politics, and laws in service of our people. Not only that, 
the power of our community is massive. I mean, one in five, one in five of Generation Z identify as a member of the community. 70% of Americans believe that our community should be protected in terms of non-discrimination protections. We've even identified 62 million voters across this country that prioritize LGBTQ plus issues when deciding who to vote for. Our job is to make sure that we're turning all of that power into the action that we need to create change. That's what HRC's job is. And we've got paid staff on the ground in states across the country. We've got 36 local steering committees, volunteer teams that are doing this work in states across the country. We truly believe in the power that people have to organize and to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And a majority of these laws are, are targeting LGBTQ children and in schools. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how that is impacting young LGBTQ people and children, and what do you say to proponents who who are in support of these these bills and say that it is for the benefit of children? My my heart breaks. I mean, of the over five hundred anti LGBTQ plus, Q plus bills that have been introduced across the country, nearly half of them half have targeted the trans community and our trans kids. And the thing is, even when these bills aren't signed into law, what they do is create a culture of fear, a culture of concern. They spew transphobia out into the world that results in real life violence and harm to our kids. The Trevor Project has a stat that 40% of trans youth have considered suicide. That is unacceptable. And the idea the pure idea that our opposition wants to blame this on the kids themselves or wants to blame this on their supportive families is outrageous because they're doing nothing to deal with the number one killer of our children, which are guns. We need them to stop pandering to their to this MAGA Republican extremist base and to actually deal with the issues that are facing our community, the crisis that's facing our kids. And guess what? It's not about pride t-shirts or non-binary mugs at Target. It's about the guns and the violence that people are experiencing. They need to take action on the things that actually matter. And, and the White House has uh, pretty much been pretty vocal in uh, denouncing these bills and these laws. Um, and, and I know the DOJ has challenged some of these laws um, and saying that it's in violation of the 14th Amendment. Uh, and there have been some action coming from the White House. But what is your message to the White House at this mo this moment, especially given this uh, emergency that that has issued? This is a moment where our leaders, especially our allies, are called to even more. I want to give the Biden administration their flowers. They have been the most LGBTQ plus in history. You know, it was Biden's leadership. Respect for marriage act was signed. One of his early acts was to sign one of the most Expensive orders to protect the LGBT plus community. And the visibility in the administration is notable from Judge to Admiral Levine to Kareem Jair. That is really work. And at the same time, I want to see more from them in addressing the crisis, the state of emergency that, that is impacting our people. Before I was at the Human Rights Campaign, I was at Planned Parenthood. I was fighting for reproductive rights. And when Dobbs fell, you saw a full government, full-throated and full-chested response. I mean, they launched reproductiverights.gov. They had everybody in the administration out in the streets. We need that same level of response for the crisis that is facing the LGBTQ plus community, especially our trans family and our trans youth. And 2024 Republican presidential candidates are are uh, centering anti-LGBTQ rhetoric in many of their statements. Obviously, one of the more uh, uh, discussed candidate, Ron DeSantis, is, is in the race. And a lot of um, these laws that we've, that we've seen have been birthed from Florida, where he is governor. Do you fear greater assault as this becomes a core platform of the upcoming election? Absolutely. I mean, the things that these Republican candidates are saying are not only dangerous, but they're flat out lies that they're saying about the community. And we also have to be clear that their dangerous lies are actually resulting in real 
life violence. It's creating the type of transphobia that makes it okay for people to launch bomb threats at hospitals that care for our kids. They're creating the type of transphobia that's resulting in shootings and attacks in our community, like at Club Q, and resulting in armed people with weapons outside of drag queen story hours. This is a crisis right now. We have to deflate this political attack, and we also have to make sure that we stand up to these bullies. The kids are looking at us right now and wondering how we're going to respond when there are adults, adult politicians, who are questioning their very humanity. This is a time where we have to be more bold and more vocal than we ever have been. And that's got to start at the top with political leaders not ceding ground to these bullies. And some of these GOP candidates have been sort of lumping uh, these anti-Black, anti-woke, as they say, uh, messages with LGBTQ, anti-LGBTQ rhetoric and putting it kind of in one category. Uh, what does that say to you in terms of when you think about uh, the, the, the varied communities that are now being centered in this rhetoric? Yeah. I mean, it shows to me that it's purely political. I mean, our opposition has mastered intersectionality. It's not an accident that the same people that are trying to ban gender affirming care are also working to ban abortion care. The same people that are trying to ban queer studies in schools are also banning books and banning the, the, the teaching of Black history. These are connected, interconnected fights where they're trying to sow fear and hate against all of our communities, and we have to see it for what it is. And I do think that there's an opportunity here. The opportunity on the other side is to build an impenetrable cross-movement, cross-issue, multiracial coalition that cannot be defeated. We're all called to be a part of that right now. And if we can do that effectively, we can build the political power, not only to stop the string of attacks in this election cycle, but to stop it moving forward as well. And lastly, it is Pride Month and uh, it should be about pride and, and, being, and being proud of who you are. It should be a joyous occasion. But obviously uh, in this climate, many people um, don't feel so great. Some people might not feel so proud in this climate. How do we find pride um, in this climate that doesn't really seem to make members of the community feel safe? Look, the safety concerns are very, very real. And I hear it and I see it every single day in the communities and the people that I talk to. And I am also very clear that their goal is to make us feel afraid. They want to make us feel isolated. They want to push us all the way back in the closet. They're not just coming for the progress of the last 40 years. They are coming for the progress of the last 400, and it's happening right now. Pride this year means more than it ever has. Showing that defiant joy that we have, even in spite of these attacks, is critically important. It helps our kids to understand that they're valid in who they are. It helps all of us to come out and celebrate the world that we're trying to create. And it also helps us to build the political power to know that we are not alone. This pride, we're asking people to put some skin in the game. If you're a corporation, you got to step up your commitment to pride. It's not just about a rainbow flag this year. Um, if you're an elected leader, you can't just march in the parade. You better have a policy agenda that's following that. And if you're a community member, we're calling on everyone to share their story about why pride is so important because our visibility is going to be key in getting to the other side of this. And we certainly can, because I also know that for every Florida out there, there's also a Michigan that's put in place historic non, uh, non-discrimination protections for the community. For every Texas, there's also a Minnesota that passed a, a historic ban on gender on conversion therapy in the state. This is an important moment where we have got to come together to make sure that the light outshines the darkness. And we can do that. And Pride is a great opportunity for us, too. Kelly Robinson, president of Human Rights Campaign. Thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure. Thank you.